This One Up podcast is brought to you by Rolando, the eagerly anticipated platform adventure created exclusively for the iPhone and iPod Touch. Use innovative tilt, swipe, and multi touch controls to guide the Rolandos through four unique worlds and dozens of vibrant levels. Manipulate the environment by using a variety of interactive gizmos, including catapults, bomb dispensers, and drawbridges, as you lead the Rolandos to victory. Play the game everyone's talking about. Rolando is available now on the iTunes App Store. Welcome, everybody, to the holiday two-part one-up your special. I'm Garnet Lee, and we have an excellent cast full of people coming to you. It's going to be somewhat like the E3 holiday pool party, except there's no pool and it's 45 degrees outside. But, hey, that's cool. we got a room full of people here with us right now. Shane Bettenhausen is here. Patrick Klepik from MTV Networks is here sporting the, I don't know, the Brothers in Arms what are you playing? cat helmet. What are you playing? Rolando. Rolando. Oh, cool. Wow, he's playing something in real time. That's Look, never happened Rolando before. Done right. Tina's drinking moonshine. Tina's ch- oh, oh, no. oh my god! And after you hated it the first time. Man. Hey, so and Tina San- Sanchez has arrived here. She's going to be on later as our community manager. David Ellis is uh, handling some video duties at the moment. I don't know when are you going to post that, Dave. Uh, It'll be sometime. You you might be able to see it. He might hide it somewhere. Jose Sanchez from Electric Playground is here, sporting the dual wolf fangs and heads and of extreme couture. Very, very, it's very extreme. Wolf heads with bared fangs and chains. Do you know That's is a fighter. that is that is extreme. Is what? Yeah, he, he, did he lose? Did he lose to Brock, Brock Lesnar? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so in other words, you're sporting the T-shirt of a dude that got owned. That's kind of appropriate. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Jose will be on in a little while. Uh, John Davison, as always, is here to join us at the table. Hello. And then Christian Nutt from Gama Sutra is here. Hello, hello. And en route right now in the traffic of San Francisco on a uh, Wednesday afternoon is, yes, the giant Bombcast crew. <gasps> well, you failed to explain, Garnet, is that all these people aren't going to be on this show. This is going to be a two-parter. Oh, yes. Well, I, did, well, I said it was going to be a two-parter show. Here's the, here's the plan. Here's what we're doing. Today's show, which you'll be getting on December the 19th, is... News, what you've been playing in the first segment, and then the second segment, we're going to do four-minute warning of the 2008 questions from the thread. And then the second show, which will go up the day after Christmas, we'll have the game of the year from all of the participants here that we can get on the mic to you know, give us their, their picks. And then we'll have the four-minute warning 2009 predictions at the end of that show. So It's going to be epic. <sighs> wow. And this time I remember to press play. <laughs> or press record. Yeah, this is take two. <laughs> this is take two. I hope you press record and not play. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, the first time through that, that long opening, I looked down and was like, wow, why are there not little purple lines making uh, the squiggly marks? You'll be able to see the limited edition, never before seen intro on video. So. That's right. Well, we, know we were stressed yeah. because the kids were like ignorant of the clock and were like, I don't know. We're just going to keep going I'm and glad, going. I'm glad you kicked them out. I know. I got us started. So. I know. And they got mad when I poked my head oh, in here. Fuck them. They look very serious when I poked my head they in. Look, they were, they were they very, very serious. Very stern looking Matt Leon. Were, fuck him. This, this podcast, on the other hand, has a, uh, has a full bar courtesy of the fine folks who support the show yeah, as like, the audience we, members. We've had three huge bottles of liquor delivered to our office in the last week. So the, by, vo- the vodka was delivered too? Yeah, yes, the by, vodka was delivered as well. Yes. adult Adults yeah. seem, to <laughs> seem to have careers and lives. Is that not normal? <laughs> adults bringing adult Usually beverages. Usually, it's children who give us hey, man, giant you know bottles what? of whiskey. I'm all for the sharing. How Much do you appreciated. Say that? I, what? La frog. La frog. La frog. Oh, yes. La frog. <laughs> this is like That's tea frog. Frogger. That's and I always la frog. I always mess it up. But it's a. Is an isle malt? Is that the right way to say that? I'm not sure. I'm sad? not Scottish. I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> Kind of like saying, I'm not Texan. I don't know how to pronounce that shit. <laughs> Basically. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, actually, it might be geographically further apart. Anyway. All right. Do you want to do... You brought new stuff. Do you want to do that first? Let's do what you've been playing what first. Been playing That's normal. First. Let's do that. Yeah. So, who wants to start? Me, me, me. Oh, shit. That was quick. I've been playing Nobi Nobi Boy. And yeah. I got to say, it, it isn't what I expected. It isn't... Okay. Well, first of all... <laughs> what did you expect? Explain what you expected. I, I don't know, but not this. I mean, it's, it's really not... A game. I mean, it's like it's a playground, and it's wild and bizarre and fun. And I found myself wasting a lot of time on it. But the controls are really complicated. David else has anyone played this game? Like David else is shaking his head, I mean, nodding in, in agreement. Like 
There's a lot going on in these controls. You use L2 and R2 for like four different things. It's context sensitive, and you can't die, and there's... No so, John, have you played it? Have you played it? No, no. I just I saw some like yeah. screens, and that was it. So it's, it's weirdly charming. And Describe it. Perplexing. Well, it's okay. a snake. So the that threads donuts. So the left and the left analog stick <laughs> moves your head, and uh -huh. the right analog stick moves your ass. Uh -huh. And you can plant your head or your ass into the ground, and so to keep that part stationary, move <laughs> the other part further, and the object is just kind of move around, touching things, knocking people Don't you over. Eat animals or something. You eat everything, and you poop out hearts, and eventually you get really big, mm -hmm. and you unlock other worlds. But it's really just kind of screwing around, playing with physics, and more than anything else, to me, it reminds me of Stretch Panic. And if you play Stretch Panic by Treasure for the PS2, published by who was that? Oh, God. Come on. We both own Stretch Panic. No, I don't own Stretch Panic. Oh, I own Stretch Panic. I watched you play Stretch Panic. That's even worse. I mean, you're not tweaking nipples here, but it's a lot like it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just completely bizarre. Like, if you bring up the option menu, it says overlay, and then on that overlay, if you press triangle, then you play the 2D version of the game that we saw at TGS. Oh, really? You can play that? That you was eat, real? And you eat all the letters that are on the options menu. I can do that. This sounds like a, a, a fine substance field game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I mean, luckily it's going to be value priced. We already know in, in Europe it's like five pounds, and in Japan it's like 700 yen or something, but I mean, it's, it's interesting, intriguing. I want to play it more even though I wasn't always having fun while I was playing it. And it's definitely not, a, it's the least normal game. It makes Flower seem like uh, Call of Duty. Oh boy. <laughs> Did you just say you want to play more of it despite not having fun with it? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it confounded me and like, <sighs> I, 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 want to, I want to understand it. See, that it kind of shit drives me crazy. It challenged me. This is, this is where my gaming taste obviously diverges from a lot of people anymore, I guess, is that I want to keep playing it. I didn't have a good time, but I want to keep playing it. Well, if I don't have a good time with something, I generally don't want to keep playing it. The other weird thing is it, assume, it kind of assumes you've played Katamari. It's like in the beginning during the tutorial, it's like you're not rolling things up into a ball here. Forget about that. Well, most games <laughs> you're not curious about, right? And if you're not having a good time with them, like this game is, has a lot of hard to figure out what the fuck is going on. Most games are like, okay, I had enough of Space Marines for 15 minutes. I don't, you're not right. going to surprise me. That's true. So. Most games don't come out and tell you there's no point in this game. And this so, game does. It's like there's no point in this game. <laughs> Explicitly says that. Explicitly you, says that. Do you feel like you see a potential then for it to get cool? Is that why you're interested well, to play more of it? Or I, I mean, you compared it to Flower. I sit down yeah. with Flower and I immediately am like, fuck, this game is really right, cool. This, I want to see this, more of it. I want to do more of this. Yeah, this doesn't have like the exhilarating, fun, exciting feel of Flower. It's more just like a weird little playground where you're screwing up everything. And you're just like, there's always the characters in, in the world who like, interact with you like there's little pigs who will jump on your back and ride on you and how complete is the build that like you guys have because i know in the interview you ran today which i really like there's, um, no, there's no music he said that like he's just getting to the point where he feels confident that he knows what the game's about in at this stage of development right. and he knows where he's going from here so like i feel like there's it, probably some potential for it to grow i think so i mean there's no music in our build and there's the whole weird overall meta game that everybody playing together as long as you're logged into psn the longer you stretch the further you go in the game it like helps this thing called girl there's a like girl and boy and girl is trying to like reach the end of the universe and like everybody's when everybody joins together the Who is that I don't know, <laughs> the collective length of stretching and eating that was the stretching evidently combined was like, when, when everybody gets to some level something's going to happen to the game so there's, oh, wow. there's like so a that, weird meta game happening in it too that's cool it is cool and you, you can see who stretched the longest and there's a big leaderboard and so is what you're playing right now maybe more of like a proof of concept? No, so like, no I mean, you, it comes out December 31st. What are you, what are oh. you stretching? I mean, January 31st. Is it, is, it the cumul is it the aggregated length of your worm? Body of your boy. Yes. So every, everybody that's playing... <laughs> He's called boy. Everybody's boy yes. God. <laughs> is added, toge that is added yes. together. Yes. And then it reaches a predetermined point yes. and... Boy and girl, presumably, do something. Do something. <laughs> he also implies there's going to be. He, by he, I mean Keita Takahashi, the creator, for the record. Right. Um, I think he sort of implied they're planning to do DLC to an extent or something. Like he said, that, something that made me think there's like, uh, you know, it's not just going to come out and that's going to be the end. So I'm really, really curious well, and, about and it. And it's interesting because the navigation, when you, especially when you get really long, it's fun because you can make these corkscrews and spirals and twist through yourself and twist through windows and knock people over. And if there were like levels to navigate through, like an. That would be fun. That really isn't what the game is, though. The levels are really small and playgroundy. It's, it's all very strange. But it, it sounds very strange, dude. It sounds really odd. But intriguing, despite its seeming pointlessness.
<laughs> Sounds cool. <laughs> that's like that's a weird quote if I've ever heard one. Intriguing, despite its pointlessness. But it's descriptive and it's what it is. All right, it's cool. So that's what I've been playing today, along with a bunch of Street Fighter Four and. Dude, uh, you were hardcore in the Street Fighter Four this afternoon. Well, I'm good at that as opposed to Tatsunoko versus Capcom. So I, I had to make myself feel good by beating people at a game. I'm good Did at. you get taken down on that? I got taken down by Tina, but she turned out to be second place overall, so I didn't feel so bad. Wow. I picked she, the wrong character. I picked some stupid anime girl with a gun, and she was terrible. What, Tatsunoko? Yeah. Yeah. Was that good? It was entertaining. Uh, I was entertained. For a game I'll never get to play because I won't buy a well, Japanese Wii. It also looks it looks pretty damn good for a Wii game. Mm. I will say. It was it was uh, way simpler though in control scheme than I expected. Yeah, it's only it three be. buttons. It's, yeah, I was like I was like trying to do supers. I was like, why is why is double quarter circle forward and and some combination you're not working? And they're like, uh, yeah, you just do uh, you know a quick roll and tap the R button and yeah. gets your super. I'm like really? I, I, need, I need to play more. I also I've been playing Resident Evil Five, and you can hear more about that on the One Up Show where I'm Mr. Hayden. But you are Mr. Hater on, on Resident Evil 5. Just being a realist. But I'm really excited because we do have a build with several levels. And I'm going to try to put myself away and play that all weekend. So. The question that never really got answered in that, in that chat that we had is that why, why do you think it is, and I, I mean more than just the superficial answer, why do you think it is that people were so in love with Resident Evil 4 but are so quick to turn now on Resident Evil 5? Well, maybe because Resident Evil 4 was a giant upgrade revolution for the series, and this is more of the same. But – if you get more of something you really love, isn't that great? I mean, why is that not Mark a good said. thing? Mark Donald, that's exactly what he said. It is so. exactly what he said. Is what? What you just said. He said that's exact. Remember on the TGS podcast, he's like, it's the same exact thing, but I'm happy because it's like the same best thing ever. Right. And like in his co-op and co-op, everything. I don't remember that, but that's a great you, point. You, probably because like you were plastered. But <laughs> and it's, and it's true. true because Resident Evil 4 is super fun. I gave it a 9.5. I love it. And everything's more fun in co-op, so therefore the pure gameplay shooting. Oh God, it's gorgeous. For I, fuck's sake. No? You think RE5 is gorgeous? Uh, I did until just now. I mean, you, you're like, <laughs> I think at stand up for yourself. Come on. I believe it's gorgeous. I, at, <laughs> no, it's. Uh, oh, dude, point, she's at, really hot. Oh, no, no, she's not. Oh, no, I, I don't believe, think so. I believe it's gorgeous at points. I thought it was gorgeous. I have not seen. I didn't go to the event last night. I, I so I didn't see. Well, the yeah. So the, the two new. So maybe I, I was disappointed by the, by the two new environments. They, I mean, I'm I'm up to TGS. I'm not up right. to last night. So maybe right. it all looks like you know. Dog shit now, apparently. No, it doesn't, but it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. They, just, they just stop trying. <laughs> I find it to be sort of like occasionally inconsistent. You know, I mean, that's my thing is it well, seems yeah, like high highs, low lows. It, it, there, there are places. I mean, you're. I think you're way harder on the texturing than I would, would be about it. But there are definitely spots that are are plain. There are tex- plain. There's texture, plain. textures and geometry work that looks a lot like RE4 at points. It just seems like, like and, we'll and the characters about, look so good. Like the characters do look like really the good. two main characters look so good, and like it, it, when they're walking through an ugly environment that's gray and boring. I don't know, but I still can't get past the whole. If you really enjoyed something, why is getting more of that not a good thing? And I really, no, it, I mean, I agree it, with it is that's, a good thing. But like you know, when when I've seen what's possible in terms of like new ideas, innovation, revolution, blowing me away. And did you? How much fun did you have when we were playing co-op? Oh, yesterday? it's 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 fun. How often does and it like, happen, though? It doesn't happen. Very Not much. just with Resident Evil in general. Like, how often does the series reinvent itself, and in an amazing way? Right. It's very. But is, rare. It, is it wrong? Is it wrong to want that? I don't know. Well, I mean, just do you really want it to? Would you really want it to completely? Like, that was such a great game. Isn't it okay to say, you know what? Let's make another game. Let's like that. That's a great game, and and then we can, if we need to, well, retool. Yeah. So I don't. I don't I'm, yeah, I'm just Would you complain about other series, the long-running series that had successfully reinvented themselves the previous installment, not reinventing themselves again, like Zelda? Well, and, or? And you, but usually on what within the life of one console, say multiple sequels like a Final Fantasy or Metal Gear, you don't expect huge upgrades. But this is a whole console generation leap, and the fact that um, you know it's a it's a Resident Evil four point five. It is not <laughs> Resident Evil 4.5. I'm so sick of hearing you say that, dude. It is not 4.5. You're Resident Evil 4.5. 4.5. Oh, good comeback. Okay, I'm done talking about what I'm playing. <laughs> I've hated on everything. So there you go. Wow. Right. Oh, God. Anyway, what have you been playing, John? All kinds of... I want to play what he's playing. What? It can, like, as we're recording this, what he's playing comes out tomorrow. Is that the Loco Roco clone? Yeah, clone, it's Loco what it should be. Oh, yeah. really? It's very, very you good. threw down the gauntlet. So, so, we're talking so about, can we get Patrick on, then you guys can talk about We're it. talking about Rolando, um, which is one of the NG Moco games, which is where uh, Neil Young from EA Studios and Alan Yu from EA and Bob Stevenson from um, Planet Moon and it, it, it's the, the new iPhone game publisher. Yes. Um... <laughs> They're actually in the office directly above me now. So um, now that you moved over, now we moved oh, wait, you miles away. Now? I'm way down. I'm opposite the bullpark now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah and then NG Mogo's strategy is to release like two or three short 
cheap games you're going to play for a week and then one big game. Yeah. And their big game for December is this Rolando game, which is essentially looks just like Local Roco, plays like Local Roco. But when you played Local Roco, you didn't want to hit LNR. You wanted to tilt your PSP. Right. And this is what that game does. And it tilts it and it plays just like you wanted Local Roco 2. And it even has levels where the the iPhone's accelerometer, you can twist it all around. So there'll be levels where you have a this character. Is they don't see you actually doing that. Well, we have video. We have, we have oh, video. Jose's doing it. That's right. Okay, never mind. So, so, so essentially, you're tilting the iPhone all around in 360 degrees to get characters to different locations. And it's it's just so much fun. And it's exactly when I played Loco Roco, and I, and I love Loco Roco, but what I wanted to do was to tilt my PSP. When I played the PS3 version, I wanted to tilt and my DualShock. And I bet you were tilting the PSP. I mean, I know. You I were. Was, yeah, yeah, that's what you were doing, you know. And you just wanted to go down there faster. But this is like that. So the other thing is that to promote the launch of Rolando, they've made all their other games cheaper as well. So to, that's smart. To raise awareness of NGMoco. So have you played Dropship, which is one so, of them? So Dropship is essentially a twin stick shooter, but it uses the touch screen. So, it, but it has that kind of Geometry Wars well, that's cool. aesthetic. Well, it's kind of it's kind of like what like Defender, where you're you're yeah. picking, you're picking up packages and then flying them off into space. But the, one of the coolest part about Dropship and how it takes advantage of the iPhone is that. The little soldiers who are like the bonus characters you can pick up in your levels are they, it, the game pulls from your contact list. So like when I'm flying around, it'll say like Commander Totillo or like uh, Sergeant Garnet Lee as I'm picking up these characters as they're like soldiers for bonus characters as they I'm wandering around the they level. So so um, they they lopped a buck off the price of all their games. So Topol is Smart. free this week. Dropship is down to ninety nine cents, and Doctor Awesome is ninety nine. So I don't know if you've seen Doctor Awesome. It has the kind of graphical style, well, at least all the cutscenes of like Phoenix Wright. With Trauma Center. With Trauma Center. But the game is essentially kicks. But it's only 99 cents. Yeah. But that's another one where you are you have to operate. You're chasing after and you're cutting out. Um, you're doing microsurgery on people to get this virus out. But it's pulling the patients from your contact list. So in this case, it'll be like, you know, Garnet Lee has the killer virus. You have to go in and, <laughs> he and might. cut it out. Dude, you cured my killer virus. He right? might. And then recruited you. <laughs> and then drop ship. <laughs> nice. So, I mean, this week was, I mean, we can talk about this in news, but this week was a big week for iPhone, period. Yeah. With Metal Gear and Silent Hill and DDR. Well, yeah, Konami going oh, and Frogger. Because we were all which, will, which will probably be the top seller, yeah. actually. Which will probably so be the how top did, seller. Real quick question. How do they do the twin stick control on the iPhone, then? Is, is one stick the movement of the phone? It, it, it depends on the game. Um, Brothers in Arms, which is actually a very competent shooter for the iPhone. Uh, in the corner of the iPhone. That, that, that's the, such a weird thing in the first place. It's a competent <laughs> shooter. I, I, ha, I have the Brothers in Arms helmet on me as I'm talking about Brothers in Arms for iPhone. And essentially, like it handles it two different ways. Like When you're holding the iPhone, in the bottom and left-hand corner, either it'll have like a non- there, there'll be no GUI. It's, it's just you, you, you're just to assume that there are sticks in the corner and you are kind of moving. The, and like Dropship and Jimoko's game works that way. It doesn't have any sort of interface. You're just supposed to assume that the, your right thumb is using for shooting, your left thumb okay. is for is for so movement. Pretend sticks. Yeah, it, it works pretend pretty sticks. well. And well, it works really and well. Touch screen down yeah. there. So you're just like, yeah, you're grasping it, and that's why you. And hold it works even anyway. for, for Brothers in Arms, where one is moving me around, the other, the other, you're not using your thumb. The other is just you're moving around the screen, and that's how you're that's how you're moving with your with your index finger on your right hand. So that's very DS like yes and it, it works better than the ds i mean you're still running into the basic basic problems of your fingers going in front of things but brothers in arms got over it by just compensating with like overcompensating with auto aim so as long as you got in the general vicinity and then you've got like a very psp looking brothers in arms game that actually sort of has two dual analogs you know it's dual analog mm-hmm. six because it has a touch screen i'm sure we're going to talk about this in the 2009 uh, four minute warning that'll be out next week but i'm I'm stunned at how far the iPhone gaming. If you talk to the guys that are working on games for iPhone, they're like, "We haven't even scratched what it can do." It launched in June. I I know. I mean, June. I mean, it runs. It runs OpenGL perfectly. It runs. I mean, it. it, And and what it can do in 3D is great. I mean, the problem is that the the OS isn't quite ready for games. And if you install and run a game, it tends to choke up the phone. You have to reset it. And the other thing I found is you have to you have to leave a bunch of memory open, or at least that's what it seems, because it needs to be moving stuff around. So if if you have a full iPhone, the the games will crash. Well, I mean. The, come on, there's going to be a new iPhone next year anyway. It's, well, it's, yeah. It's and, but, iPod, I mean, if you have a, a, new, there's a new iteration of the hardware but the, 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 ba- the battery is the biggest limitation, but as long as you sort of gauge your gaming time around that, like the iPhone is, is like the most exciting gaming device like in a long time. And I've been playing uh, Field Runners on that's my, the, on my uh, commute. desktop tower defense game. Right, which, yeah. I mean, it's gorgeous, but it sucks down battery power like crazy because yeah. there's mean, a that, lot of sound. That's a lot the problem. Of graphics, any, so. any, like, it can do, you know, more or less like 
almost PSP quality games, like in between DS, PSP, but the moment it starts trying to hit that threshold, like crash. the battery, not, no, it won't, it won't, it won't crash, but like it sucks battery out like crazy. Like you, you, if you play a game for an hour, you're they're already 50%. Like, but the games are settling out. down into a, a, like when EA was doing stuff, they were, a bunch of them were 9.99, and they brought e- them down. EA actually launched, I believe they launched Tetris at like the highest price point that the application store had was like 13.99. And, they and, then, and, then, and then immediately people brought out clones, because that's how the application store works, is people bring out a, a great idea or a great game, and then someone makes a clone for like 2.99, and then the publishers like EA have to you know, immediately start reducing the price or I- increasing the value proposition. And yeah, 9.99 is turning out to be the, the highest you can charge right, for an the iPhone game. But ballpark price for games is settling down at four or seven ninety nine yeah. for a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of good stuff for five bucks now, and like this NG Moco stuff is, you know. I th- yeah, I think I think Rolando's only ten dollars, and it's it, and I remember when I talked to Neil Young a couple weeks ago, he's like, this should be a twenty nine ninety nine PSP game, but the iPhone store caps out at ten dollars, and so when I play it, I'm just it's it's, it's incredible what I'm getting for ten dollars. Yeah. The battery thing's going to wind up being a problem, though, right? Yeah, but I, I mean, mean, like it was for the PSP early on as well, and. Yeah, but in this case, it's your phone. Right. <laughs> it's your lifeline to the world. You're using it as your phone. It's your texting device. It's possibly your email device. You, and because it's sealed, you can't have an extra battery hanging out, like, ready to hop on with that. I you, think can. you can. You can get cases with extra batteries. I mean, it's, it's like $100. But if you're using it as much as, I think, like, <clears throat> like John and I are for games, you're planning around that. Like, how you're using it, when you're using it to play games. You're either near a charging station or you're going to be able to charge your phone soon. Yeah, I mean, so. for me, it's a, you know, I have a 30-minute ferry ride to get home. And I can have the phone on all day, and I can play on the ferry on the way home. I mean, that's the kind of, but that's the way, what the bulk of the games are designed for is, you know, 10 to 30 minute sessions. I mean, right. you know, Vey came out on it earlier this year, and it's like, don't buy it. Don't buy it, <laughs> don't buy it. for a start. <laughs> but, you Go know, back to 1993 and don't buy it. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> but yeah, it's not, it's, this is not it, it, as exciting of a gaming device as it is, it's not meant to be console style experiences it's not meant to be ds style experiences it's meant to be very small chunks 10 20 30 minutes max for any sort of um experience and if 30 minutes you expire half your battery like there isn't going to be a situation where you're going to want to play for 30 more than 30 minutes anyway all right even we, that's, that's enough iphone gaming people are like okay. already with the, yeah, iPhone. So the other thing i've been playing i've been playing uh, metal gear solid, metal gear solid, solid 4. 4 i like turn on my ps3 to be playing valkyria chronicles and i look over there and it's like Jade, john playing Metal so Gear I came, I came to this realization like about it just after last week's show, and it dawned on me that I had this huge. Part, and I was aware of this happening to me: is that I was suddenly smitten with the PS3, and I don't know what caused it. And it, it's that sexy I, black like, piano, black finish. Me spooging all over him just four for months. Chrome. You paid, no, no. You, and paid, I was, you paid me no mind. And I was. I mean, I played the first act, but it didn't really grab me. I, act, mean, I had Ryan on, and he's like, "Keep playing, it, keep playing." Why don't you play it. Act Two, which yeah. is which is the best act in the game? Yeah, you are hooked. Yeah, Act Two completely sold me. And I, I mean, like, and I did something that I've not done at home for a long time, and that is, I sat down and I played a game for over four hours straight. And you know, I don't do that with my personal gaming time anymore. But um, giant bomb oh, guys, giant bomb guys are here. Come, see, come make yourselves you a see drink. Ryan come, and Jeff please, please, and Brad. Please enter the bar as we. They're, they're as, here and take advantage of the bar. As John and I pontificate on how war has changed. <laughs> war has changed. War, war has, has changed. changed. War has changed. Isn't that Fallout? No, Fallout. War has changed. <laughs> war has changed. War has changed. So, I, I, I mean, when we get to the game of the year thing, I mean, it's. I mean, what it's, up there. it's up there. <laughs> Gar- it's in my like, list. What the fuck was that? It's on my list. Garnet, I was talking to a friend of mine recently, Andrew and, and <laughs> Kelly, and he said, because he just played through MGS4 uh-huh. after I told him you really should, because he loved MGS3. I was like, if you love MGS3, play MGS4. Mm-hmm. And he said he came up to you at a bar mm-hmm. while you were dancing on a bar. <laughs> it was not to, dancing on to, a bar. To, like, the Buggles. Was he wearing and, pants? Next. <laughs> and, and he was talking to you how much he likes MGS4, and you're like, it sucks. I did not say And I said, he is so and I said exaggerated. Garden and I don't talk about that game. He's so exaggerated. Well, so we shouldn't talk about that game. We're not going to talk about it. You and I aren't going to talk about the game. But Chapter 1 through 3. So did you great? finish? How far are you? How far? I'm in Act 3 now. Act 3? Act 3 you're at the totally last bizarre. good act. Yeah. So no, you're, I, you're and wrong. I fully intend to. It's the last good act. You're wrong. But I'm, I'm on a roll and I fully intend to beat it by the weekend. So, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it sunk its teeth into me. As it Six months late. Mm. As it should. Yeah, isn't that? But amazing? I'm kind you of this... play games after they came out. Like you don't have to play them the week they came out. I know. Well, that's kind of the, that was kind of <laughs> what prompted it, and it was like I was suddenly aware that there was a ton of games from earlier in the year that I sort of touched on to get a taste, so we could talk about it, and then left them alone. I'm like, why am I playing through Prince of Persia when I could be playing through Metal Gear Solid? I mean, that was sort of the the, yeah. the thing that really swung it for me, and then it was like, well, there's all this other stuff I need to go through as well. 
I need to finish Valkyria. Definitely. I really do. I need to Definitely. start it. Yeah, you, yeah. Christian, like, you're like Mr. Ar- Eternal There's Arcadia. so many games to play with, you know? That's what, so what have, you been, what have you been up to? Actually, last night I finally started Yakuza 2. <laughs> That's another one. Garden. That's on my dude. I can't. Like, bl- you you know. and I love that. Series. I do love that series. And now, as soon as I yeah. plugged that fucker in the drive, I'm like, it all came rushing back to me. How much I liked the last do, one. And do just, you miss? You know. Do you miss the English voices? Um, not really. I mean, the the Japanese Brad, voices are. Brad, Brad just turned our lights Brad, off. Brad caused the power oh. outage. <laughs> Actually, even better, Brad's ass Brad's caused, ass caused, just caused turned the power our outage. They got room. Um. No, because, because it's, it's, it's said it. It's said it. I actually am a big fan of the English voices in, in the original game, and a lot of people c- criticize them. There were weaknesses. Um, I really liked a lot, most of them. I think it was very good. But no, I mean it's it's, hmm? it's perfectly immersive to have it in Japanese, and it's good. And and now that Yakuza, Yakuza and 3 it pulled you right in right off the bat, like it okay, had the same exactly. feel, same same. Like sort of, you go to the beginning and you go up to like the. Um, this grave site, and you can re- watch a, like a sort of a recap of the f- of the uh, first game. And as soon as I got out of that, I just started walking around the town. I'm just like, oh, dude, perfecto. So we, nice. We've had it. We'd have a change of microphoning. We had a hot tag. The hot tag. Tag me. Oh in. no. Oh no, dear. Two hot tags. <laughs> uh, two hot tags at once. Say hi. Hi. Oh, and a sweet voice. <laughs> Thank you. The people often say my voice is sweet. <laughs> hi, Jeff. Hi, dude. How you doing? I'm good. Oh, good. Now. So, so Christian, you've been anything else about Yakuza too? I mean, you haven't played it much. It sounds like. Um, no, I really need to play it more. I've been really busy with like real life lately. So, mm. don't you hate when that intrudes on? Uh, no, on I, was game really, time? I was like last night. I was like 11, 11 p.m. and I'm like, it's way too late to start a game. But God damn it, I need to start a fucking game because I'm. You know. And then what time was it when you fell asleep? Well, three. I, I actually two. actually put it down like an hour later. Wow, that's self control. You like, need to reprioritize your life, though. See, like, so I, you know, I went out to that Capcom thing last night. We were there yeah. till like midnight, but then the some heat, of us were there till midnight. Yeah, okay, yeah, some of us. Yeah. So the heater in my home has been broken for about five days. It's been about forty-eight degrees at bad, night. Bad timing. So you know, yeah. So it's like I've you know Spike Awards. Like basically, I've been on this like five-day drinking bender. So I haven't really needed heat. Wow. Uh, <laughs> but I got home last night for after you know being at this thing. Get home around twelve thirty and decide like I'm gonna look at this heater, dude. So I'm like dismantling the heater up to like three in the morning. Didn't fix it, but you know, <laughs> I didn't blow up the house either. So everybody wins. Is this like a Silent Hill puzzle? It's, like to, it's just gonna get I there. Find yeah. a screwdriver and pull the cover, and oh. then the fog. Rolls Rolls in. I'm like, wait a minute. Where? Nice. So, have you played anything? Uh, What's Jeff been playing? I have been. I mean, we're still still doing some review stuff here and there. Like, I, I just came off of Power Up Forever. Oh, I'm playing some. No one's talked about that here. Give you, us some Power Up Forever love. You don't power up forever. You then what the hell's with the name? Power I, know, up I know. For a while. That's Aww. yeah. Party first party foul goes to uh, Jeff, and it's my first drink. First too. party foul goes to Jeff, who who's got a doesn't straw. even finish his first drink. He's like, he's like God, I'm working gross. You're kind of making a, a lake in your pants. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> got to. I guess I could use this cup to get some of this back in there. Oh, uh, we're we're good. <laughs> oh dear. I'm, I'm just uh, and there it went. So yeah, power up forever is a lot like spilling a drink in your lap, and that you, you expect that the drink is going you're going to get the drink in you, and then you don't, and then you don't. Then, thank you. Um, yeah, it eventually says like you've maxed up your cannon, you've maxed up your laser, and like wait a minute, how can wasn't I max I power, up? Wasn't I powering up for forever? I, I allotted forever for this game, and all of a sudden it's like 20 minutes in. It's just repeating the same power up over and over again. It's like a, a, a Halo overcharge before your weapons. So not a bad game, but uh, misleading. Oh. Isn't it like a dual stick shooter? It is. Um, one of eight need zillion more of those. But this one, it's like it's like they it's like someone sat down and, and played a bunch of flow and then decided, you know what would be really cool? If this game had guns and wasn't <laughs> so zen. A bunch of hippie crap. So uh, it, that's it's a kinda, really weird description. Yeah, it, it's like someone took flow or like the first stage of spore because it's got this weird kind of evolution track to it where you're always getting bigger, okay. um, and it goes from there. But uh, other than that, it's been you know we've been filling in blanks just for for doing the giant bomb game of the year stuff. We're still plotting all that nonsense out. So uh, seen a little Dead Space, you know, Fable Two stuff that I didn't review, but just haven't gotten around to. What do you think of play. Dead Space? I think it's beautiful. But but do you like it? I mean, do you are, do you think I'm still I'm still playing it? it? I'm, I, I am into the vibe of it, but I, I have not finished it or anything like that yet. So I'm still moving. So my do way you fall? It. So from what you played so far, do you fall into the? It's not a horror game. It's an action game, or do you like buy into the whole? It's still horror. I, I buy into like the the action button description of it's a stomping on dead stuff game. Yeah, you know, like like that's that's more. It, it, yeah, not so much horror. I mean, that's not really the vibe I'm getting off of it. All right. 
Anything else you want to throw in there before you? Uh, uh, let's see here. Before I spill bug? something else. Before you spill something else, fix yourself um, a new drink. Yeah. Um, let's see. What, what else? Um, playing some GTA 4 on the PC. Uh, which? Oh dear God, why? Have you had his someone luck? had to? Have you had as bad a luck as we have? Uh, well, I got it to run, but the frame rate is like <laughs> zero to five, and oh, you know it's 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 a damn mess. I haven't tried it since the patch came out. Supposedly that helps. But... We had so much trouble on the PCs here. Yeah, Vinny, did you guys do any video of like him, of him playing? We did some videos. Did you see the videos we did? So we have these videos on game videos that like are when we first got it loaded up on. Uh, and this happened on more than one machine here. It's not like we were just trying to take a shit on the on the game. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was actually not loading in geometry. Like, yeah. like Ryan is Ryan is driving around in the car and it's just like he's driving in the void. And there's not even a road. There's nothing. The geometry's not filling in. See, and then slowly it was like drawing in bits and pieces of the wireframe. <laughs> or it would like pop in a mip map here. And you're like, what on earth is going on? The system requirements are incredibly steep, right? Aren't they? Well, we were, yeah. this, was on a pretty, this was on a pretty stout gaming rate. This was on one of the gaming rates. Yeah, I mean, they, they built that machine. game to work on future PCs, man. If you, if you have state-of-the-art, run it on medium. They're the new Crytek. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the problem I kept having is that uh, I wouldn't get the detail textures. I'd be up close against a building and it would still yeah, be like the, a lot. the just like big big gray block or like the road wouldn't draw in so all the cars were like a foot and a half above it but the, the interesting thing is is like just even by playing it in its jacked up state like i got far enough into it to be reminded like oh wow hey dude this this game was awesome and and be reminded of, so of how much I, with you on I, that. I loved it on consoles earlier this year so so there with you on that yeah a lot right. of people talking a lot of mess. I know. Coming off the Spike Awards, people going, really? GTA 4? Like, there was yeah, really? Serious GTA 4. That. Like, come on, man. It's, I know it's not cool. Why is it not cool? It's just, this, see, there's a, more revisionist history. It's like, you liked, we, had, we, had the, we already had the Resident Evil 5 discussion. Mm-hmm. But like, the big thing for Shane is that it's Resident Evil 4.5. Sure. It's not enough of an upgrade. And, and that's why I don't get this whole thing of not being able to say, hey, I loved 4. Wouldn't I love more of that in 5? How did people suddenly decide that Grand Theft Auto wasn't cool? And, and you know, they made some pretty significant changes in 4. You know, it, it's, 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 it is not, no one's sitting there going GTA 3.5 with that game. So, no. and, but, but it still yeah. got backlash. Still yeah, got totally. backlash. Well, you know, w- when anything's that popular, there's always going to be some people that, that want to be like message board cool and be like, man, I'm, you know, I just played Bioshock again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if so. you could see the look on Jeff's face when he delivered that, it was awesome. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm at the art gallery. That's right. Touching myself, looking at this big daddy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Beautiful. I have a new favorite game. Oh, really? Is it involved? Never mind. Stop. Breaks. Anyway, you have a new favorite game, yes. Oh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> you were going to go with that, but yeah, Tetsunoku. Wasn't going to be good. Cap- it might have involved touching yourself. <laughs> Is it uh, Let's Catch? Let's Terrible. Let's Touch. Let's Tap. The, the let's arc, Tap. The, sh- the fighting game we just played. T- T- Tatsunoko. Tatsunoko? Really? Yeah. How did... Whoa. It's well, fun. that's because you won. You liked it I because you won. I didn't win. I got second place. But, well, Shane said he got second place, didn't he? No, she beat him. She beat, you beat Shane, right? Yeah. Why do you sound sad about that? <laughs> I don't know. He's Shane, Shane's, at me. Shane's, he walked away. Shane's official one-up tournament of, for fighting game record is now he lost to me in Soul Calibur, and he lost to Tina in Capcom vs. Tatsunoko. And didn't he owe Crispin like $40,000 at one point? <laughs> Shoot. <What? laughs> <laughs> Dave's, David's been l- l- winning money from him at their, at their Clarent apartment, like, He's, he's a good fighting game player, don't get me wrong, but it's, he gets very competitive and it's funny, so we each have to give him a hard time. because He gets competitive about, like, ordering off of menus. He gets competitive there is, there is the Shane. There is the infamous Shane menu game, since he's not here. That You, you guys know that you know the Shane menu game, right? Where he won't tell you what he's ordering. Right. Yeah. Because. But, and then if you can't, order Can't have the same thing anybody else has. Right. If you order, he'll wait till everyone else orders, and if someone orders what he was going to order, he'll change. He has to order last. To Will he like get the same oh. thing, but like get it a little different, like medium rare, no, no, no pickles? That's kind of talk into your face here. Yeah, uh, he, he, I've actually been to a restaurant with him for the first time, like I'd never been there before, and asked for a recommendation. He wouldn't give me one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how he rolls. Just how he rolls. Don't worry, Brad. We'll get you, we'll get you in in a minute. We're keeping, we're keeping, we're trying to keep some sense of order here so that the show is actually listenable. Because I've done these before, where it became like a big group, and then. And everyone on the boards is like, wow, that was shit. I can't stand it. It's terrible. Yeah, we did one of those uh, drunk at PAX with like eight people on it. Didn't, and it was, didn't, kind of falls apart. It was fun. I had it's, fun. Oh, it's a blast. It's, we have a fun, yeah. but then like no one likes it. All right. So other than that, which you only played for a little bit, what, here's your chance. Tina, what you been playing? Uh, other than that fighting game, I jumped into Mirror's Edge finally, and I played Ellipse. That was a lot of fun. Well, okay. So which one are you going to tell us about? Mirror's Edge. What did you, you think of Mirror's Edge? 
I, I wouldn't give it game of the year like uh, Matt Leone did. <laughs> Matt Leone loves that game. But you know Matt's thing is that he picks a game every year that he latches onto and like he's like, that's it. I love this game. It's the experience yeah. of the year. Is he just like one of those like weird like time trial weirdos that's just like, I'm going to shave two seconds I, I think my that, time. Yeah, he, he is actually. I think you're going to Like that super like OCD yeah. like. Yeah. Dude, no. No, thank you. Not hating on him. But the, I don't know. There's just little things that bothered me about the game. Like, you can run and, like, jump kick someone in the face, but then they don't even fall on the floor. They just kind of stand there and take it. Well, they're very resilient. Make any sense. They're very sturdy. They're, they're cops. They're cops. It's like a woman. It's like, they're future it's like, cops. Yeah. You, you, you drop kick woman. your women in the face? Yeah. Dude, that's... <laughs> <laughs> People's elbow? God. <laughs> Serious. If you could man. do that in that game, that'd be a way better game. If you could drop the people's elbow on cops, <laughs> I would I would like Mirror's Edge. That's the one thing holding and me back. And I also uh, jumped into Peggle Knights on PC. That's a lot of fun. It's really addicting. It's really? Uh, Peggle, Peggle addicting? Who would have thought that? <laughs> yeah. That's wow. But it's at night. It's at night. Well, yeah, it is at night. Well, the night makes it better, dude. We and the unicorns the and, the, and the frogs get all sultry. The me. unicorns and the frogs. It's a big make out scene so in Peggle Nights. There was a press release today, too, saying that they had a free downloadable, like. Uh, free downloadable holiday content holiday for content, your Peggle yeah. Nights. All right, are you giving us anything else or are you bugging out and putting Jose on? I'm putting my, my brother, Jose Sanchez, on. Oh, I thought you were married. I thought that was your, that was your girlfriend. You're going to give him the elbow. That's just disgusting. That, oh. That's terrible. Sorry. Don't anyway. look alike? I don't know. All right. So <laughs> while you guys are trading out uh, headsets, this week I actually got into some SOCOM. Have you played any SOCOM? I played I, Well, I tried to play it when it first came out. So and it was unplayable. It was a disaster. Yeah. And, and it's much better now. Although I have to say, it is really funny to have, uh, you know, I hadn't played it when it first came out. Mm. And, I, and I had the box version. I sat down with the box. And I'm like reading the manual. I'm like, which is, I don't know why I was reading the manual. No one reads manuals anymore. I was bored. And you, you shoot, like, did it just say, shoot dudes, go? It said, it said, enjoy these modes. Uh, instant action, uh, casual, you know, make, make a game, clan matches, all this stuff. And then I turn on the game and log it up. And I'm like, wow, you know, the menu that's here in this manual has a lot more options than the menu that's on the screen. <laughs> what something's missing. Something's missing. What is going on? What is wrong with this picture? And then I'm like going, because I honestly hadn't followed the news closely enough, and I read all of the uh, SOCOM forums. I'm like, wow, they actually released this game without all of the features that are in the freaking manual yeah. for the game. When are they going to stop doing this? Because it's not really helping. <laughs> it's absurd. I mean, it's worst thing Sony on- had a real good run there of, of just like bad online launches. And right I mean, in general, people, not yeah. just Sony or. Oh, just like, like, just like the manual yeah, like, thing? I mean, yeah. Well, no, it's not just the manual. Just like releasing games that aren't done. It's like, doesn't help you. Look at Tabula Rasa closing. Because they put <laughs> no. out the worst beta yeah. ever, and then the game sucked, and they're like, now we're closing it. But like, really, if, if they had released that game in its final state when it launched, would things have been any different? Maybe. Maybe. Like. Maybe, but, I don't know. Really? Maybe they didn't need to send really? Richard Garriott into space. <laughs> Whatever, dude. That dude went into space, came back a changed man. He's like, I'm, dude, Cut life is too short down. for bad MMOs. I'm out. <laughs> I'm going back to space. <laughs> we play Lich King up there. You, maybe you've heard of it. He went, he went on, uh, what was that movie where the astronaut went up and like had the encounter with the alien? Was that Johnny Depp? Which, oh, yeah, which movie had the astronaut? The, the, the astronaut's, alien astronaut's wife. Is that the astronaut's, astronaut's wife. wife. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, mm. see, that's Charlize, you, Charlize uh, Theron. Oh, she's so hot. <laughs> she's so hot. Baby. So hot. Anyway, but the game itself actually is really solid now. I had a blast playing it. That's I good. Mean, I mean, the thing for me is, is even when I got it going, it was kind of weird just because it was so much like the PS2 games, which is like on one hand that's really cool yeah. because I think like the SOCOM fan base wants that, but on the other hand, playing SOCOM 2 on like some of the same maps with the addition of being able to move the controller back and forth to lean. I kind of ended up. I, 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 it left me wanting more. I find that so far what I played online, the detail in the maps uh, makes it a really the detail in the maps, especially in the geometry of them and how much they can can rubble the cover. And mm-hmm. by that I mean like really have you know chest high cover here and then you know thigh high cover there, and it really depends where you are behind the right. cover. Really brings a lot to the to the game because it's a very slow paced game. I mean, it's a very slow, thoughtful, considered game where you spend a lot of time, you know, and you have to communicate. But it's cool because I found that in the games I played, first time on PS3, almost everybody has a headset and people are talking. And if you're not talking, people will be like, dude, why are you not calling out? Why are you not calling out targets? Why are you not talking? Yeah. If you don't start calling them out next time, we're kicking you out of the room. Like, well, that's good. That's like wow. SoCom, SoCom was the original like console voice chat game. Like they yeah. they shipped those first ones with headsets, and one everyone of, had one. one of the and it was only awesome. Five games you could play with a headset. Right. Right. Like, 
there. It, it's rock solid. I mean, not, well, not rock solid. Right now, the action part of it, the game mm. inside the game is rock solid. But it's still, still it's so... I mean, especially for bringing... SOCOM was one of their big titles on PS2 that brought a lot of people into PS2. It had a ton of people playing it. Yeah. I think... I think um, I think it was their most played online game, yeah. wasn't no, it? Yeah, it was, for sure. Definitely. And this game is not going to be able to hit that same mark for them in its current state because by because it doesn't have like an instant action button. The way you get into an online game, which it's meant, and it's only online right now, it's only online period, it's an online yeah, game, yeah. Is, you, is you go online and then you click a button to join lobbies, but then it asks you whether or not you want to create a game or join a game. And the lobbies and then, can only hold 256 right. people. So, so then after like you, US West 94. Right. So then after you click join a game in progress, you have like this long list of all these different servers. So, I mean, imagine, and I'm, I realize it's so calm, hardcore players, this doesn't impact to you guys. You guys are like, you know, it's just like Madden three years ago. You hop into a lobby, you mix a game, you're ready to go and it's no big deal. But to to Joe Consumer who gets his game on Christmas or whatever, it pops it in and be like, so am I supposed to join West 1 or West 12 or, or yeah. what am I supposed to do? And then even after you do that, then you're in a lobby and there's just a bunch of games. Right. And you, you have no idea what you're did joining. Did you play it by yourself or did you play with friends? I played it by myself. Oh. And like, the worst part about that is like, like – But I mean you can still play online with multi. Yeah. It's, it's cool that they set it up like that in a way because that's the way it was on the PS2 and it's familiar to those people. But those people deserve better. Oh, absolutely. Dude, that's you, what I'm saying. They you know, this is like better. a post Xbox Live era, and I think like the patch they just put out might have finally added a quick match button. It does, it does, but it's so, really wonky. At least from when I was, I don't know if really it's out wonky? yet. Yeah, really wonky. It's really. Oh, there's like a golden ticket inside, like, yeah, and you get to go to the factory. It's awesome. It's really wonky. It's really it's Willy Wonka. <laughs> anyway, what I was reading about in the uh, patch notes when, and then this was before it came out. Is it out now? <clears throat> I have no idea. Anyway, it's all good. Yes, right I'm just gonna say, say yes. yes. I think yes. it does actually. Yes. Come, it might actually come out in Thursdays, which would be yesterday's patch. Anyway, was that it? Was, it also adds. It also adds a party system, and the way they were setting it up was that you had to join a party in order to use Quick Match. When you joined a party, it would automatically fill the party out to 16 members. There was no like in between. Oh, and then only by joining a party, whether you had enough friends or not, and letting it auto fill out, could you then use the Quick Match, and it would only Quick Match you in 16 versus 16. I was like. What on earth? <laughs> They're like, yeah, we're going to add the additional functionality for 8 versus 8 and 4 versus 4 later. The PlayStation Online yeah, setup has so much to work with. SOCOM even, deserved yeah. a better faith than this. And I mean, definitely. And we thought we thought Zipper was making a real SOCOM, but instead they're making that Matt, Matt yeah. you know, which terrible name, awful. That, that, the they won't ship it with that, though. Ever. Or they'll come up at least with a different ac- like acronym. Call like it a so- call multi it a Assault Gun SOCOM Future Tools of Destruction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway, so it is really fun though if you get into it and and get playing in it. We had I had a really good yeah. time. The other thing that's bad about not having so I've, we've gotten accustomed to player balancing too because especially on Xbox Live, right. all the games have player balancing. Two of the games that I had you play long matches. Two of the two of the game set of matches that we played was I played was great. One of them was terrible because I hopped into it and I got on the side that had an open spot and the other side had four dudes from one clan Mm -hmm. who are all like rank five and six and two (laughs) dudes from another clan and then two guys who had at least clan tags but weren't from the same clan and they wiped my little like group of scrubs off the map. Right. Actual Navy SEALs and they destroyed Dude, you. That's what you're saying. It was brutal. Yeah. It was it was that, ugly. That brutal. game's real bad about you standing up and getting shot and not knowing where the, the shot came from. Right. Like that is like that that's one of the things that really stood out to me. It's like we're in a post Call of Duty four world now and yeah. that game seems like a relic in a lot of ways. It's but hard is, it's hard to go home again. Like I SOCOM one and two, I just wasted large chunks of my life playing it. But I, 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 I don't know if I can go back. Oh, <laughs> Call of Duty 4. He's like, Call of Duty 4. I got to come and get in on the Call of <laughs> Duty right. 4. Yeah. Let's talk about headquarters. Let's talk about HQ, man. That's what I play. Yeah. I love it. Anyway, SOCOM. I, ho- I Let's hope talk that, about Ice-T. I hope this Land 6-6 six, six was SOCOM because actually I find it. I find the game has a lot of prob- potential. I think it could be really fun. I like the weapons. I like the weapon feel. I think mm-hmm. SOCOM is a fun game still. It, it, I, you know what you say, Relic? But it's a... Maybe like a polished relic. It could be a polished relic if they can add all the other pieces in. Yeah, like I, I think if, if Sony treated it with like a little more respect and Slant Six like was given a little more time to polish it up and, and keep working at it, like they could eventually get there. But they just shouldn't have shipped it yet. Yeah, they, obviously, they shouldn't. It's, it, it's, yeah. it's depressing. Yeah, it's DLC, funny. man. It's the future. They're gonna add it all later. All right, Jose, what have you been playing? Been playing a lot of Call of Duty: World at War. <laughs> <laughs> 
really, pretty much because it's I'm in headquarters, pro- man. I'm, headquarters, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, because I'm in the process of moving, and it was the only game left in my Xbox when I moved all my games to my new house. It's World at War, Teen. I'm sorry, false alarm, false yeah, alarm. Not, not for. Play- <laughs> sorry, sorry, sister. Dog Dude, killers in here. Christian, Christian will willingly give, let you in. So you can I have nothing to say about this. So. <laughs> <laughs> sis, sis, my Christian sister lived World War II yes. once. He's not going to go. He's not willing to go back. Yes. Best of one of yours would like to be on one of yours. I wonder if it's time for news yet. Oh, you're, you're right. We should get to news. We'll, so we'll get to news in just a second. We're talking about Call of Duty for a second. Yes. Well, so. What about World at War? Do you want to know? Uh, uh, well, I know pretty much everything. Oh, I went yeah? through the single player. It was it was good times. Four was a little, I like the story in four better. But I mean, World at War was not bad. The the multiplayer works just as good as four. I feel. But I didn't think the story in World at War was as good as four because they didn't really build up the characters. You didn't feel a connection with them. And like, what about when the, the Sarge goes down? Spoiler warning. You can see, you spo- see, here's how the spoiler, like warning, his life. The spoiler level warning, level. warning thing works like this. You say, spoiler warning. Oh. And I thought then it was, you I, do, yeah. yeah. I thought yeah. it was the other way around. Spoiler warning, you can get an achievement that way. <laughs> and I didn't, it's true. How about the segues between each story? Like, there was nothing there. Was like, you didn't enjoy Kiefer Sutherland telling you exactly what was going down in the worlds no, at war? Not really, no. It was amazing to me. I was like, I was watching, I was playing 24. It was great. Jack, but, but Jack 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 Call, Call of Duty World at 24. I remember playing uh, with the multiplayer beta with Jeff. Do you remember that? Yeah. And you, and you asked everyone to moment. go in the middle so you could stab yeah. him. I was like, what the hell? Oh, no, I, I didn't ask that. That was like a... I think I was joking, and then they Actually told the it. testers to do it, and I'm like, well, this is a retail <laughs> disc, so whatever, Let's jack, jack, it. jack, jack. Yeah, I killed funny. like nine dudes in a row. That was pretty... I, I actually, I mean, I finished World at War on Hard, and I, especially towards the end, I, you know, where I talked about it, I wasn't happy with the, like, there was a lot of cheap kills. There's a lot of cheap deaths yeah. towards the end of the oh. game if you're on Hard. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, but, I, I, I mean I that, that's like Call of Duty style, though. Like, you But zombie take it defense is awesome. I think zombie defense is fun. Yeah, it, it's neat. Nazi zombies. Yeah. I, think, I think they should rip that piece out and just sell it as a, as a Xbox Live Arcade game. Because or, or you can Actually, just play Left 4 no, Dead. It's like how they did with Still Alive. But it's different than Left 4 Dead. It, it, so it is a little because different. Because you're, like, you're just stuck there in the house, and there's just wave after wave of them that come at you. It's like super That's hard, too. I don't know. When, when we played, fast. it was just like, you, you were in on that, too, right? Yeah, it was yeah. just like, we're all going to stand near the, the random weapon crate and hold down that room <laughs> and hope for the best. Yeah. And after about like 45 minutes, well, maybe, you know, I really had to go to the bathroom the whole time we were playing. <laughs> so maybe that, maybe that colored my impressions of it. But yeah, I mean, I actually, you're, I, mean, I can see what you're saying. Like you could break it really. It's another one of those things you could break by just like sitting in one spot and then right. it just becomes like a chicken shoot. And you're like, no, oh, don't mention chicken shoot. <laughs> the worst game ever made in the history of games. It got the lowest score ever on our show. What was a negative two slash zero? What do you mean? Comedy. What was it? You gave it the score. What do you I, g- like, I gave it a negative two, but Vic gave it a it? zero. Uh-huh. He said he liked it better than me and gave it a zero. <laughs> well, you gave, again, you gave it a negative two. He gave it a zero. He liked it, is, it better it than you. Oh, God, I, don't even, I can't even think about that horrible, horrible. All right. Just, so ah, block times. it out, man. Anything else? Anything else you've been playing before we move into the news? We have to get Shane so we can do news. Yeah, um, page Shane to the page Shane to the floor. A lot of uh, XBLA Kingdom of Keflings just came out. Kingdom Did you finish it? I finished it on the, my debug like a yes. month ago, and I was like, really? I played this game for fifteen hours. Really? Well, you liked it. I, I mean, what's wrong I, but, with liking it? But I just didn't know like that much time had gone by. I was like, I'll just play for a couple hours. I'm like, it's six in the morning. I should really go to sleep. Yeah, Last day, should. I have to work tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, so we're going to do some news. So who should we bring in for news? Interlopers yeah. get out. All David right, Ellis and word. John Davison come in. Oh, look at that. Interlopers. Interlopers be gone. Why, when are you, when are you interloping? Why, why, are you, why are you dissing on them? Interloper. I interlope for a living, son. I think we could have fun. I mean, we, could let, we should let maybe someone else in, don't you think? No. 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 <laughs> well, you're very opinionated today, aren't you? Right, right. Like I know. I, why are you so inter- What's with the... patch on this chair. <laughs> <laughs> There, I there is. Were, I thought you were a housebroker. Who has the camera? There is a wet, wet spot where Jeff Gersman's penis may have been. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, but then again, where hasn't Jeff Gersman's penis? It could be possibly it, it, been. It, it could be. Taint, it could be taint sweat. This industry works, man. That is. How many casting couches have you been on? Ed Boons? I think so. <laughs> so what's the over under on how many train wreck posts there are right. already on the message board John, for this? John, disaster? mic up, mic up. Because speaking of it. Speaking of Ed Boon, I have quite the transition for our first news story. Okay. Do you want to take a break or something or no? Um, have you taken any breaks at all? Any we should 48 probably take a break. Minutes you've 
we've been taping. Take an Insta break. All right, we'll take a break. Can, All right, so people are, people are bailing out of this podcast in droves. All right, so we'll take a break. You can, guys can listen to the Garage Band built-in music. Don't send me any more questions Wait, of wanna, asking me what it is because it's just the built-in music of GarageBand. Are you band. sure you don't want to tape some of my Korg DS10 av- avant-garde Philip Glass company? Do you have it? Not on me, but at home. I if you bring it tomorrow, sure, I'll put it Just in here. Bring it in, and we'll we'll record it off a deck. All right, so we'll, we'll bring it in. And we'll put it in there. Done. All right, so give us give us thirty, and we'll be thirty seconds. We'll be right back. <laughs> This One Up podcast is brought to you by Rolando, the eagerly anticipated platform adventure created exclusively for the iPhone and iPod Touch. Use innovative tilt, swipe, and multi touch controls to guide the Rolandos through four unique worlds and dozens of vibrant levels. Manipulate the environment by using a variety of interactive gizmos, including catapults, bomb dispensers, and drawbridges, as you lead the Rolandos to victory. Play the game everyone's talking about. Rolando is available now on the iTunes App Store. Oh, you want me to bring it back? I see. I thought you were going to do the news. Garnet Lee, correct me if I'm wrong, but no. isn't this your goddamn show? My goddamn show! Isn't that phrase like a year old now? It is. Um, yeah. At least. At yeah. least. I think it's actually All right. too yeah. old. Anyway. I've got some news. I love that you have the news because now I don't have to read it. I'm so sick of reading it. Are we going to pass news around? No, I didn't, I didn't highlight anything, so I have to draw myself. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm so sorry. hit it. <clears throat> what do you got? All right. First bit of news from the week. Midway closes Austin studio and lays off 25% of workforce. We have a quote here from their CEO. The cost reduction measures are vital for us to rationalize our operations and provide the resources necessary for the core properties to succeed. These initiatives, along with other steps we have taken this year, are a response to specific challenges we are facing in Midway, many of which have been amplified by the current economic conditions. So this equals about 190 people total. And, you know, that game you were talking about in the last episode, this Gears of War killer coming out of Austin... Gone. Gone. So this is Vegas is still running, yeah? Yeah. That, I hear that's done. I hear it's submitted. I also heard it's mainly mini games. So I wonder Oh really? If, I wonder if that's gonna sell to the G- and GTA. Wheelman's game. still happening. Wheelman's still happening. I'd imagine the next gen Mortal Kombat is still happening because that's being made in Chicago. There were some cuts there, yeah. but Maybe. Wheelman, the big thing is, are they going to actually polish it up to the point where it can be the AAA title they hope for it to be, or will it just be another sort of, you know? But regardless, it, it doesn't look too good for Midway, but maybe they'll pull out of this. Maybe, does, they'll, it maybe does, they'll turn it right. around. It definitely doesn't look good for Midway. But, you know, you know the economic climate's really bad. Layoffs everywhere. <laughs> Midway took a really hard hit this week. Oh, the next one. Next one. Hackers may have infiltrated Sony's home. Although we're not sure okay, why they apparently, would have. Did they insert some code for fun? <laughs> That's maybe. Engadget reports that an individual named Street Skater Fu has figured out vulnerable. <laughs> that's, 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 hey, that's Jeff Gross. He made the news. <laughs> Skater he Girl's had, brother. He has figured out some vulnerabilities to the system, which could quote end up really evil with a sim- simple script. But didn't he find? It wasn't the deal with this that he could change stuff on his own PS3, but it didn't upload to well, the network. Yeah, what, what's funny is he found a way to upload your own videos and pictures to the billboards and TV screens at home, which were initially part of the plans that you could yeah. share your own pictures and videos. That was the idea, yeah. And only you can see them. So right now, the home security hasn't been compromised, but this is indicative of the kind of loopholes and gateways they left open. So maybe savvy hackers could hack into home, delete files from the Sony server. You know, it's just kind of like a warning sign. Like, watch out, Sony. Make sure your security is up to par. And right now, perhaps it is not. Porn incoming. But yeah, this is a little bit of a reaction. Dong react- hats. Th- this is... This- <laughs> Dong hats. At the least. <laughs> At the least. <laughs> yeah. So home could get hacked. Watch out. Hmm. Uh, finally, Fallout 3 patch has been released that fitches... That Fitches. 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 Oh my god. Andrew Fitch be proud. That fixes <laughs> fixes that obnoxious freezing bug to where every time you would get a PSN message, someone signing on, signing off, it would freeze for a few seconds. That's finally deleted and they added trophies. So way to go. I heard that m- might not happen, so it's, it's pretty cool. That, Why would that not happen? Well, I don't know, but it happened. I heard, I heard it was going to happen. Do, do we have any idea how it sold on PS3 compared to 360 or PC? Allegedly, it sold, it sold really well on everything, mm. but the, you know, the official numbers aren't out. Yeah. 
other big news, uh, Club Nintendo finally launches, offers a bunch of cool swag. In Japan, there's been this cool service from Nintendo where you can, every time you buy a product, you register it online, you get a certain number of points, and at the end of the year, they, they all these cool things you can, you can They create. shower you in gifts. Right, and we're actually getting a lot of the same gifts. You can get the Hanafuda cards, you can get the Game & Watch collection for DS, it's an exclusive. It's super tight. I, know, I heard it was a little buggy when they first put the thing up, but I guess it's running smoothly now, so yeah. if, if you're a Nintendo fan... You know, pull out all your little uh, UPC codes, and I've go- gone through the library today and grabbed about sixty games that I'm going to register tonight. <laughs> yeah, and I would say <laughs> eight, co- such a dude. eight, eight, eight copies of the Naked Brothers game, which is going to be amazing. <laughs> But, but you know, I hear you get something I'm, really I'm, sweet for I'm gonna that. Get, I'm going to get awesome marketing emails from Nintendo. Too. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it's cool. And it, like, Dear people, sir, people have been Adam, bitching. Why do you own four copies of, <laughs> of the Naked Brothers game? People have been bitching about this forever. And I, I, for one, am really excited that Nintendo actually brought this to America. Finally. So, yeah. Very cool. But club Nintendo points are different from Nintendo points, right? Yes. That's the deal. Yes. Yes. One is like you a monetary value. Right, the other yeah. is. It is, it is. This isn't the points you buy virtual console games with. This is like an intangible fan. I'm waiting for Microsoft to allow you to spend gamer points on the shit. They talked about that. Why not? Years ago, 2005, they were talking about that. Yeah. All right. Next piece of business. Um, we recently at One Up recruited the legend Nick Debar, aka Nick Rocks, to do some Japanese news for us. And one of the first stories he did was this rumor report out of the Japanese mag Game Lab, and he has a bunch of really cool rumors that no one had heard before. Number one, uh, the popular RPG series T by the game company N will see six releases in 2009. What that is is the Tales of series from Namco, six new games in 2009. That's a lot of games. One for every platform. Hmm. So Tales hmm. Mania. Hmm. I could see that. This other one is that um, Nintendo, the game Rhythm Tengoku, Rhythm Heaven, it hasn't come out in America yet. It's a DS game. It's coming out in spring. Yeah. Apparently, they're working on a Wii version, and the Wii music team is working on it. Uh-oh. So, it could go either way. Uh, no, it could, it could it only really go, go one, one way. way. <laughs> I, see, I see Kate Winslet with her hands spread out <laughs> wide on the bow. This is a kind of exciting one. Um, s- allegedly, Sony is, rep- is uh, recruiting people from Linden Labs, the guys who made Second Life, to work on home. Oh. Well, shock! They already like said, it already is second line. Dong hats, <laughs> dong hats, dong hats. It's coming. You're like really into this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> second life. That's the only reason second life is interesting is you just fuck around and just make the most the bizarre creations. And home is boring because you can't do any of that stuff. Here's one that I didn't expect. Capcom reportedly working on a Xbox 360 sequel to Steel Battalion with its own gigantic limited edition controller no, that what? will be wireless. What? That sounds like a terrible idea. That sounds like a like beautiful, amazing no, what, amazingly what awesome what I, what idea. What I mean is from a business standpoint, it's a right. terrible idea. Somewhere, Che Chow, who gave the first one a 10, is creaming his jeans. <laughs> He's very excited right Patrick's now. Patrick's right behind him. He's all like, yeah. You're like, 500 buttons. Yeah. Fucking yeah. This zipper's rusting shut. It's like, finally, a third game for this. Do this. And finally, Nintendo is said to be working on a second iteration of Wii Fit with new features including stretches and massages, possibly erotic with release. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, a certain former U.S. Army instructor reportedly been approached about endorsing the game. I'm hoping it's the guy from Full Metal Jacket. Arlie Army. Yeah. Yeah. That, I bad. think it's a safe Anybody, have, anybody have a good quote from Full Metal Jacket? No? Mm-hmm. What is your major malfunction? There you go. We, we fit will probably draw, you know, it'll lead people to do what Vincent Do- Doffner did in that film. I've seen this before, man! All right, here's another shocker. Uh, remember the, the Metal Gear teaser a few weeks ago where everybody assumed it was like either a new Metal Gear Acid, I hoped, or uh, MGS4 or on 360? 360, yeah. No, it's actually a Metal Gear Solid Touch for iPhone and iPod. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, um, you know, Patrick and John are excited. There's screenshots online. <laughs> and everybody else holding iPods and iPhones in the room. Let's say, let's see. One, two, three, <laughs> it four, is, four, five. Yeah, I have an iPod. I have an iPhone too. Um, but it, it's set in the world of MGS4. But based on the initial two screenshots, it looks kind of like Silent Scope. There's like a Metal Gear Rex popping up behind a trash can. I think you just touch him and shoot him. It's probably going to suck. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. Pro- probably going to be shit. I'm dismissing it now. It's Dis- probably going to suck. Completely you know, Well, it. The Silent Hill game that they announced at the same time, which is coming out this month, right. really is that. I mean, that's just tapping the screen to... Yeah, there's like one nurse in front of you in a barren hallway, and you t- t- tap her face and she dies. And they also announced... Sounds terrifying. They also announced DDR... Uh, Frogger. S Light and Frogger. I think Frogger, perhaps the most exciting one. Really? More than Metal Gear? We'll see. Should talk to Jeff Minter about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's a depressing one. Um, source claims that Factor 5 has cut half of the studio. We initially ran a story about this and went up a while ago. We did. And it's starting to look more real. Allegedly, they, they've laid off uh, 37 people last week. Payments being withheld. No one uh. getting paid. And it's 
allegedly, you know, a, a uh, because of the, the Brash Entertainment deal, they they were making Superman for Brash. And hadn't been paid in a long time, and it sucks. yeah, it seems seems pretty rough. And we're holding on for dear life. It sounded like because you know Factor Five. They've been around a while. They made a lot of games. People like Rogue yeah. Squadron. Rogue Squadron was a great game. Yep, Lair was a little bit of a snafu. <clears throat> Most things pre Lair were pretty good though. Yeah, most so things pre layer. I hope they come I played out. a whole hell of a lot of Rogue Squadron. Yeah, I hope they can pull out of this because yeah. it'd be sad to see them go. Good luck, guys. Here's a creepy one. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and the ring director Gore Verbinski also directing the Second Life movie. <laughs> Starring who? No one's, assi- no oh, one's, no one's attached to it yet. Variety- I want to know who's going to star in that. Starring but- you. <laughs> Variety is reporting All right, that- how much I get paid. <laughs> but really, can this, can this possibly end well? No. No. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And is Second Life even hot anymore? Really? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, the bizarre thing with Second Life all along. It's never been that successful, but yet it gets... A ridiculous amount of media exposure for no reason. It's okay. Halfway into production, they can just rename it Home. <laughs> home the movie? Yeah. Somewhere Brett Ratner is collecting a finder's fee. So <laughs> he was going to make a Guitar Hero movie. Oh, I think he still plans to. I mean, that was Slash, like, uh, those guys, David Chen had on, a, on the yeah, Slash film podcast. No so, so what's the Home movie? A bunch of uh, identical looking Euro trash guys giving each other blowjobs? And dancing. Okay. And, and line dancing and, and you know. It'll, it'll get better. Maybe the movie will get better. And finally, a lot of people wonder why we didn't talk about this last month. Oh. Well, especially why you didn't talk about it. I had, I had a because well, you know I made, I made this game and I'm really upset about it. I had a flurry of, of questions saying, "Get Shane to get talk sh- about." Get Shane to cry about this. Little Big Planet sales slip in November. Little Big Planet, according to our friends at Gama Sutra, Christian not in the room, he walked out. Moved 141,000 copies in its second month of release on the U.S. NPDs, yeah. bringing the grand total to what is this? Two, I, 250. I got a comment on my one and only Little Big Planet creation. Did it, you? Yeah, it was lame. <laughs> <laughs> was it? Well, I mean, it was just a bunch of buttons was that made it? different farting noises. So yeah, I mean, oh, it was pretty wow. unashamedly <laughs> lame. How Britishly pre- predictable is that? It was a bunch of little buttons that made farting noises, and a bunch of little buttons that made different burping noises. Do you- <laughs> I, I thought it was funny. My five-year-old thought it was hilarious. Do you have the iPhone <laughs> auto farter thing? No. You don't have the. There's two of them out there. There's two. I do but, not have okay, this, John. If your level brought joy to your son. Then, then it who works. Cares if who some cares? Asshole calls he lame. thought it was hilarious. They, both of my sons thought it was hilarious because universally farts are funny. They it's are. A fact. And like you know, despite the fact that Little Big Planet has only sold two hundred and sixty odd thousand copies in America, does that suddenly make it bad? Does no, that mean we're all supposed bad. to hate it? No, it still has a ninety five percent Metacritic but score. What's interesting <laughs> is that the it sounds like I mean they were saying this week that the download packs. I mean. They said they were going to be shocking in how much they added. And so the Metal yeah. Gear one is the first one, right? right. Yes. Well, the first one is the holiday one coming out. Um, it's a smaller, it's a smaller yeah. pack coming out over Christmas. But the Metal Gear one is going to be big and shocking. And there's a Final Fantasy one coming. And I mean, all along, Little Big Planet is a is a platform, and it's going to continue to yep. expand, and it gets better over time. And hopefully, it's a game that has legs. And hopefully, as people start buying PS3s, they'll buy it, or maybe they'll make it a bundle, a pack in in America. I think that's a really smart idea. Yeah. So. I think, you know, we talked about it before. I still think they need to adapt the way they market the game, though, to make it to where people are into <sighs> buying the game to play the game and not just thinking about it as I buy this game as a tool set to make sure. That's true. I, I started playing through the single player after your recommendation. And by, when you get to that second world with the, the Mexican the, the monkey, man. one of the one oh. with the monkeys and the crocodiles, yeah. and then you go after this, like the meerkats or whatever, and they're like. I mean, like, it's so imaginative. It's awesome. Well, and there's a weird perception that there's no single-player game. Like, in Time's disastrous article a few weeks ago, they were like, oh, there's no game in this. Like, you're an idiot. Like, there's a huge game in it. It's a great game, and it's it's infinitely expandable. And like, But that shows you how far the messaging has been off, and they just need to... Well, they got so preoccupied with the you make it yourself that, I mean, like, I mean, the the quality of the stuff that Media Molecule made is so high. Right. I mean, as something to aspire... I mean, one of the downsides is that if that's what you are... If that's the yardstick by which you're judging your own content, they've set the bar so high that it, you know, it, I mean, once you get sort of halfway through that second world, there's things throwing you around all over the place. You drag, there's like creatures made out of objects and they're sending you to go. There's the thing where the, the mother sends you to find the kid in the nightclub and yeah. bring it back to the nest. And, exactly. In the disco. Yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. And part of what you get by playing through all those is an idea of just how much you can do with that tool set. Actually, Garn, have you played through those yet? No, I've, no, I've you, seen all of them. Over, all over the holidays. Days, I want you to play through single player. I will. I'll probably I really do. I'll so. probably play a good amount of it, but I've seen so, much of it. Yeah, all the people who are like are wishing death upon the planet and wishing failure, go play it and watch your heart be warmed and you'll be a good person again. <laughs> wow. 
How, and that's how, all the news I got. That's the little big planet that stole Christmas or something. And it, it is. came down from the mountain and its heart grew ten times. We were talking... What was that question? White Knight Chronicles scores? Did you guys talk about that? That's a good one, too. So White Knight Chronicles from Level 5, the giant RPG that was going to save the PS3 in Japan, was reviewed in Famitsu and got 7787? In Famitsu? In Famitsu. That's which is oh the kiss boy. of death. I mean, because maybe their marketing budget is. Yeah, did that mean they didn't advertise? Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps their check didn't clear. I don't know. That's, we'll see. But, that's pretty scary, though. You know, I gotta say, Sony. If anybody from Sony or Low Five is listening, add voice chat for America, or you're gonna get low scores here too. Yeah, that would definitely hold it back. Not having a voice chat here. I mean, they have time. They have time. They have time. Stuff with it. Um, who saw or went to and wants to talk about the VGAs? Because I want to oh, hit that. Yeah. All right, so we're, let's bring Ryan and Jeff in for that. Sure. Yeah. And I, we will talk about some VGAs because uh, I, I made a Twitter post about it, about how bad it I'll was. I'll say I'm happy that Media Molecule won Best Studio. And that's, I am happy about and that. And that's all I have to say. Well, you, I mean, if you want to, that's all you have to say about the whole thing. Before, before I, I'm going to hand over because I didn't, I didn't watch all of it, but I do want to say something about it beforehand. Because right. I think um, one thing I would like you guys to talk about, actually, is... The VGA is in relation to how the games industry presents itself to the world, because I think it oh, did definitely. untold damage oh, to... definitely. So a year's worth of, of Wii and Guitar Hero and Rock Band making video games acceptable, I think Spike pretty much undid a large amount. I mean, thank God not that many people watch it. Yeah. So, see, so that's a core part of my argument, because I sat there watching that show with Suzanne... And she just sort of, not even mouth agape, she just sort of sat there watching it like, like, what on earth is this? And we picked it up about halfway through. You know, they were showing it back to back to back to back. Yeah. And we picked it up about halfway through the first showing, and we saw all that part. And then we got to the open. Have you seen the open, John? Yeah. So oh, I'm I'm on the advisory. Really? Jeff, can we can we give Jeff the mic a minute? Yeah. Just so, um, hang on. Right. So the open the open has. If you haven't seen it, the open has Jack Black in a hotel room in his underwear, like having some sort of masturbatory fantasy. Well, they want First, it to be. They want it to be the VMAs. But it's, okay, I get that. It's edgy, man. But edgy. so Jeff and I are on the advisory board, and yeah. I'm sure a bunch of other people are too. And I don't know if you remember a few years ago, every every year they would bring us into a room somewhere in San Francisco and say, "What should we do to really make this like resonate with the?" Mm. And every year we would say. Less hip hop, more games. Bring the guys and make the games in. Celebrate the games. Show all of the award every year. I mean, there was you and me and Chu and you know, like every. So they're just going. Everyone from every outlet. Way to piss you and off. <laughs> every year we would go to the event and like we, you know, we we do the nominations and the and the and the voting and you know I think. In terms of the the stuff that won, I mean, I think a lot of people were upset the GTA won Game of the Year, but apart from that, most there people was, are crazy. They are nuts. Um. But in terms of the event itself, they just stopped. I mean, as for the advice, they just stopped asking. I mean, it, it all became a. I mean, really? Yeah. I the mean, last, they, the last two years, it's just been nominate some games. Yeah. Uh, pick some winners. Here's your bag. Well, which I still use the bag from last year. It's a nice laptop bag. <laughs> 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 but I think what they... That's what, what it's been reduced to. That's what it's good for. It's but, like, oh, it's a great way to get a new laptop. But back. when you watch through it, and certainly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, anyone that... I mean, I think a lot of... There were a lot of kids that wanted to watch it because it was video games on TV and a big event. Right. And I think anyone that was in in the room with them when they were watching it that had sort of gotten comfortable with video games, and it's like, when, GTA, and like, here's the God of War trailer, and, here's, and it was all M-rated, and it was all like, just like, very male, very misogynistic, very... very misogynistic. And it was video games. I don't know what games you people are playing that that's not the majority of what games are. That's bullshit. And, and, all and games aren't, aren't God of War, GTA, and, and Fallout. That's not all, all games. But that's the majority of what's going to be at the top of everyone's list at the end of the year. Well, if you're a 14-year-old boy, Boy, yeah, but yeah. that's not games anymore. That's that's. I, I still think that that represents the lion's share of what video games are. And as far as the award show goes, I, th I thought that uh, it was bad as an award show, but only because they slided the awards themselves. The fact they kind of just like, like crammed the only, them the only, in there yeah, where they the, could. There was the two moments. There was the Will Wright moment and yep. the Tim Schafer moment. Yep. Right. You were like, okay, Those they got great. that stuff right. Everything yeah. else, you know, like in the middle of the show, when they're just like, and the winners are, and they just roll out every single award. Right. Dude, it's like it's like, like the that. Then I know I realize so. One thought I wanted to get out there early on is that this is a award show, but it's an award show that's put on by the network, and so it is much closer to the MTV Music Awards sort of thing than it is to like an Oscars or an Emmy. And we have those award shows. We have them at GDC. We have them at Dice. But they're but they not televised. Yeah. Oh exactly. God, I wish they were because they're exciting. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I mean, re- I mean, seriously, th- this is the award issue. shows Every- are bad. Everyone's talking award about how we, we want a really serious award show for video games. Who watches the Oscars? But how about an award show that celebrates gaming instead of celebrating other cool media like rap stars and models and movie but stars? But that that, that and- entire thing was really about showing you the awesome games that were coming, like the exclusives like that came out of show. it. Was not a were, show. Were, yeah. were brilliant. There was a lot of exciting shit coming yeah. out of that show, no doubt. I mean, and I think, I mean, to your to your point, I mean, thinking about it it was on spike yeah. yeah and it's the spike vg and i think and it's wh- still tv right and i think right. one, of the, that, one of the things yeah. that as as games people we tend to think of it and we what we want is something that represents all games and what yeah. we got was something that represents spike doing video games it, exactly but and if you want it to be an award show you have to treat the awards better than like what jeff said you can't just dump them out there in the equivalent way that like the makeup best makeup artist for a documentary mini series <laughs> right. gets you know it's like that's where you hear those things it's like also winning awards tonight we're and you're like oh, okay i can go look that up on the net and but that's like there were big awards that was like 75 percent of the of the awards on the right. entire show were rolled out in that one package right, so yeah. if you want me and to it, take your awards yeah. seriously take your awards seriously and i think that like they're in a real interesting spot because i, I feel like i, I talked to, to keely a little bit and, and over the years and, and shane Soderfield and and you know those guys are into the game side of things oh yeah but they're putting on a damn television show and they have to worry about ratings i and get they have to worry about people that are traditional tv people that are like well we need more girls and we need more of this and mm-hmm. it just sounds like it's this endless compromise i think what they need to do if they want to take the awards seriously but still want to put it on television is they need to make that show twice as long have the first two hours be online and have that be the real award show save the last five for the last two hour block Make You're that hired. a big explosive, it's a fucking great idea. Entertainment extravaganza, yeah. Fifty Cent, LL Cool J, UFC fighters, previews, whatever. I think you just hit it. That's that's what they should be doing, you know. Because then we get what we want. Because you know, the people that are into that sort of stuff are going to be the people that would watch two hours on the internet on a webcast, absolutely. And then they absolutely. would tune in on TV to watch the rest of it and, and see it, you know. But there's like stuff like that. I think they need to cut down on the branding. It's like every single thing, at the end mm. of every trailer, like pre-order the game now at GameStop. Like, n- no, <laughs> hell no, never, no, no, thank. Thank you, sir. Uh, and then it's like stride gum on. Uh, could, could they possibly sponsor one more video game related thing? Could they sponsor this podcast. Could they spon- five. Get five a- gum. <laughs> I said it. I just said it. That's a better gum. I Yo. like trident white. What? Oh, shit. <laughs> we get some chicklets up in here. Oh, look at that. He has it with him. Trident white. He's got the trident white. I'm repping zebra stripe. I don't have any on me because I ate it all. It's that damn good. I can't keep it. <laughs> I, I, and I think I think you know, regardless of the the perceived quality of this year's show, it seems like it was it's still getting better. Like it's getting they're, 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 they're yeah, getting there. Right, yeah. it's, it's like they're they're tuning it. They're tuning it. It's like I, like I didn't feel super embarrassed by this year's show. Last year was Samuel L. Jackson, and there's the constant jokes of like all you gamers in your mom's basement and y'all smoke the weed. Like th- they've gotten away <laughs> that from was, that. That was I forgot about that. It was so fucking bad. It's too. so terrible. Well, that so like, and Sarah Silverman coming out and just abusing the audience for five minutes. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. but that's yeah. nice. That's, <laughs> that's, that's really what you want from Sarah Silverman. Yeah. I just want her well, th- th- her heel in my crop. <laughs> We're getting off the point okay. here. Sarah Silverman's okay, but that's not the point. <laughs> They're getting but it's there. It's not like, a bad point. Yeah, well, it's, it's a great point. Jack Black, I think, is is the, like kind of the right host for the balance that they're trying to strike. And, is he, and is people he, like is us are gonna never going to be fully he's satisfied. He's going to be a movie, isn't he? He's going to be a movie? Is he in a movie, Jack? Yeah. Jack that, that is what he does, yeah. yeah he's, in- <laughs> he's been in a couple. Like, <laughs> he, was, he was so shamelessly selling it, though, like, all the time. Like, even yeah. on the way out, I'm mean, like, I, I agree. That, that's more of that product placement and marketing kind of thing yeah. that is in there. And, like, Brutal Legend, like, like my, my, dude, oh, like, my Brutal Legend, my Brutal Legend, my Brutal Legend. Like, that was so over legend. the top. And it was, like, kind of cool because you want to see Tim Schafer yeah. get his due. But at the same time, it, it crossed the line into, like, I did this, like this the Tim Schafer moment. This isn't, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, with, yeah. I, it, just, it, just because I thought it was kind of nuts. Yeah, it was a ridic- It was a ridiculous. He had moment. a giant You're like, flamethrower, and they brought him out in this chariot <laughs> drawn by hot girls, and and Rob Halford was there. It was, <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was so absurd. I, I thought that that was yeah, that was a, a really fun moment there. Mm. No, uh, you're not, not you're so not much. Sold on it. What did you like? What was your favorite moment, Garnett? Kim Kardashian. It's based on. 
a book. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That was actually one of my favorite moments as well. I think they need to stop getting models to try and do comedy. But, but that's like a problem with every award show yeah. where they just try and like just do all these bad reads from all these people with no sense of timing. It's like, I'm going to pour out. It's like a T-1000. It's a, I got my own Terminator. And that really and, didn't play. Like, that uh, yeah, didn't like, play so, on TV. It really it, didn't play in the theater. Because it's like pin drop. Because like, you, yeah. you couldn't see what was going on. She like She's pouring something. You can see it's kind of silly. Well, I'm a little taller. I could see. I I could see what was going on. Like it, it, I could. I don't know. I could see it. It's it's still yeah. Just like th- that gag did not work yeah, like at all. All, in all the, the room. seat fillers around us were not amused. No. by <laughs> just about anything on that show. Like, Anyone you see with a black this? wristband on that broadcast is like casted audience. Oh, of course. So yeah. they, were the people, they were the people in the couches that were near the the. Front. No, no, no. Oh. no. I th- maybe a few of those people were, but I think a lot of those people were also like the winners. Oh, and, gotcha. like, okay. the, and the winners handlers and, yeah. and stuff like that. Anyone that so. was standing up in front of the stage right. during like a performance or the people that were further in the back that was a, a lot of seat fillers. we accidentally got into a sound stage in line with the casted audience even though we had tickets and we're like <laughs> standing with all these people who were like you could tell that like they were told you know look a little ex- you know we want a multi-ethnic audience and look a little exotic they like dress up like you're going out to a club exactly mm. uh, wear, wear so something silver like, or gold and then just like we're standing in the middle of this just going like we're, I think we're in the wrong spot. Let's go. We need to get out of here. That's kind of funny. You know what? You asked like what I would do. Even like I, I really like your idea. First of all, of having the webcast followed by the real thing. But I think that even then, you still have to have some elements that celebrate the that celebrate video gaming. I mean, it is ultimately a video gaming show. It's nice to have you know Fifty Cent and LL Cool J and whoever else shows up for whatever ones in the right. future. But I still want it to be a. I want I want it to be something like to me that show came off as a parody of a bad seventies variety hour. It's like, oh. well, they've, they've kind of given up all. I mean, it was, for the it was, most part, like trying to make the they acts even relevant anymore. I mean, when they first started introducing the hip hop, it was like, right. well, you know, Def Jam, the Def Jam fighting games coming yeah. out, so that's why it's hip hop themed, and EA are a big part of it this year. And then, you know, was it last year when we got Kid Rock at the end? Yeah, Kid Rock was in there, and it was like, why are Kid Rock and Motley Crue here? You know, because they were all in all those bands were in Rock Band. I think that was that was the, the, the tie in last year. Okay, and then this year, like Fifty Cent has his game coming out, obviously, so that was like an ad. For for that, so you bring where my school? Where my bring Will Wright up there? Will Wright's a a really super intelligent guy, and B he's got games that people recognize and will identify with. There's absolutely no reason you couldn't have done a 30 second montage of Sim stuff, Sim City. They did and some spore. They did. They had that little intro thing with the like the the, the characters. Spore characters. Yeah, that it was was really weak. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. I the was sort actually of thing surprised that I would... they let Will talk as long as he did. Yeah, yeah. So no, we, like, yeah, no, we, they we did started wondering talk. if they were going to start playing him yeah. off or something like that. Like, oh, this <laughs> is going to be. They did let him talk. They did. Yeah. Let him... I think yeah. You can imagine a guy in the back. Going, when is this geek going to shut hell? up? Yeah, they, I mean, yeah they, they need more moments like that. But right. the thing is, also, I mean, you don't want him to get up there to do the Will Wright show because that would be, <laughs> dude. No, whatever. If he got up there and then like all of a sudden like Gilligan's Island <laughs> charts behind him, and UFOs, here are the cosmonauts and the cosmonauts. Now Eric Hybo. You were saying. Oh, what was I saying? I don't know. I interrupted you. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, like Will Wright's thing was really good, but how many other people could really pull off something that interesting? Like, like he is a okay. rare public speaker yeah. among, among video game people. Well, most people are going to get up there and thank a bunch of people, and that's, you know. Yeah, it's, what, it's what we got. As much as we want to see those people get very public recognition, you know, nine people watch that show, and one, two, like, and we're, most of us are in this room, you mm-hmm. know? If you're faced with the reality, I really want to thank everyone back at the studio. Yeah. Every, all, everyone out there who played the game, this is for you. Yeah, like faced with the reality of trying to make a TV show that people actually watch, they have to make sacrifices. I agree, and that, I, I get that, that it has sucks, to be a good TV show. But and, and obviously, I haven't sat in the room and tried to figure out how to do it. But I know that watching that, that it wasn't, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. So what? Is, you, you, you've not fully articulated your view. On the on, whole thing, on, on the show, I, I I think that I think that giving it a, a a lot of people around the business seem to be saying I'm going to give it a pass because it got better and it did get better, but I still think I think it's gotten better pretty much every year. Yeah, but it, it's starting so low that it, it's still it's still poor. It's still poor and a poor reflection on the industry and still the sort of thing that non gamers who might be wanting to turn to might turn into it. Like mm-hmm. you said, all of the goodwill and all of the accepting and understanding of video gaming that may have happened over the course of the year, that needle sprung back faster than a camera return I on know, a 3D and game. I think, but like, I, thunk! But I, I'd not, I'd actually, until we started talking about it here, I'd been thinking about it as, as gaming wide, but it I think the spike, the fact that it was on Spike, spike and it was yeah. the Spike Awards. For the Spike an, audience. For the really, Spike which audience, is, yeah. which is, you know, misogynistic 
dudes in a very Jack, sort of tight. Jack Black it's, having it's a UFC. threesome with a 360 and a PS3. I thought that was pretty funny. I thought that played. Yeah, I, thought, I, thought that I, played. Thought, I actually thought yeah. most of the comedy, like if it wasn't read by a supermodel, I thought most of the comedy played. My absolute favorite moment of the whole show, though, was uh, Neil Patrick Harris not having his card. Like because not at, knowing who won. At, at yeah. first, it looked like that was just part of the bit. And then when then you, you realized that wasn't? it was just a, a screw up, it's like, oh, awesome! And I don't know if Live you, I don't know if you could hear it happen, like because they had the woman come on the PA and shout the guy's name, yeah. the, the world of goo guy's name, and and even that that was even more confusing because he just goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy just runs up and he's like, oh, world of goo, world of goo, world of goo, yeah. yes, thumbs up, world of goo. Yeah. All right, how long before? Few do. How long before we get a better award show? And will it be VGA or will someone actually do a, a better award show? I well, I mean, it depends on what you mean by better. I mean, you know, there's um, there's stuff like Dice that is is good for the industry, and it's, right. You know, and you're not, but it's, it's, it's that's only good for, for members of that right. organization. Yeah. Like that's yeah. not even wide. I, I mean, the reason I really like the VGAs is because it has this advisory panel where it's people from different publications, and I think that that makes it valid. You All know, right. it's like I think the, the awards are on the right track, uh, even though you know, I, obviously, I don't agree with every single pick that they made. Um, and some of the nominations are tough because, like, they'll throw out the you know game of the year, best Xbox game, best adventure game, sports game, music yeah. game, and then they'll be like best performance by a human male. And I'm well, like, that's specifically I don't fucking yeah, know. I know it's like I don't, <laughs> that's specifically there so they can get celebrities on the show. Like, right. like that exists so that right. they can have a better TV show. I remember know? last year. I mean, I thought some of the best voice acting was the the kid that did the voice in Bully, and I'm like, but there's no way in hell you're going to bring him up. I mean, it's going to be like. <laughs> Yeah, so it's Kiefer Sutherland and Jenny McCarthy. Right. And Kiefer's there, and he gets out and gives his speech, does not mention the game once, the company. Yeah. He's like, we did 1,600 lines worth of, I need a drink, and <laughs> what are we doing here? Like, well, part of the issue, and uh, and Vinny here actually brought this up in, in our own podcast, is that y- you don't have, like with, with any other awards show, with a, you know the, the Oscars or the Emmys or anything like that, people are coming up that you recognize. Right. Whereas you don't really have the game characters, the things that you right. necessarily associate with these products. You can't have Master Chief come up onto a stage because that would be the worst. That, that, that would, would actually like an be all CG the, award show. That would oh, be the man. absolutely worst thing you could possibly have. Just like have like green screen. Green, like, Neil just, Patrick Harris and Lara Croft. Like, oh, <laughs> just shimmy me sideways the damn until space. there is room. <laughs> yeah. Okay, H. okay, it's better than that. It's better than that. Yeah. Like, I give. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Oh no, I, I don't mean God. to be too much of an apologist for it because it, it definitely is not great. But you, you know, you have to keep in mind that it is a TV show. Yeah, right. it's still on basic. I, I think cable. that the, I think what they should do is actually just do that show every year and just call it big exclusive preview extravaganza. Oh, absolutely. Let publishers pitch them to reveal the trailers. WPs, baby. Gotta get the WPs. Yeah. Got the world yeah. premieres. Mad WPs. There's some good stuff on there. That that uh, the the Lost and Damned thing we've watched that about a dozen times. We've been walking around saying Brotherhood, Brotherhood, <laughs> like ever, ever since. So yeah. <laughs> Why did everyone think Mafia Two looks so good? I didn't think it looked good yeah, at all. I didn't. I, don't I, know. I didn't see like, anything. There I didn't see a looked, game there. I know. I was. I, all right. So I saw like I'm amongst I saw, friends like, now. Like, like standard mafioso kind of stuff. Like okay, church guys getting whacked, car driving. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep, nothing, nothing to excite. For sure, Dante's Inferno was great until we saw the playable character, and then it was like, <gasps> <laughs> yeah, I was like, Arr. put on some nine inch nails and uh, <laughs> watch the uh, the seven trailer. That's like, but that's some of the Dead Space guys, so maybe, 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 yeah, maybe. I really liked the Uncharted Two trailer. I mean, it was it was just a, a teaser ass teaser, but it was right. a teaser ass. It, it looked good, and it, it totally just. It resets the character. Like yeah. you remember, like immediately, like yeah. why you like Nathan Drake. And like, I totally oh, that's smart ass, that John McClane style. Uncharted remains my favorite PS3 game, so I'm definitely, mm. definitely down with that. Definitely down with that. And Brutal Legend. I don't know. I, I, I the thing for me is like with any Tim Schafer game, it's not the action that makes it brilliant. It's the game. It's, it's the whole. It's, whole it's, it's the writing. It's it's stuff like the level design, like specifically in, in Psycho Nuts, just some of the the insane twisted stuff that you saw on there. But just showing me a few clips of you know guy rocketing across some weird environment and well, saying a well, couple Jack of Jack Black lines. makes like Jack Black noises. Yeah, like no thanks. I think Jack like, Black could I'm be a worried. great pairing into that game. I think that could be a really 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 good game. I think I think that Jack Black could no? backfire and and, don't it, think and so? it could go way wrong. Jose is saying no no no. Oh, yeah. 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 We had a lot of material. We wound up, wound up with a lot of material on Spike Wars. Okay, so um, 
I'm torn here. Should we take a break or should we just wrap this show? Let's then- wrap this show up. So we'll, we'll, we'll wrap this show, which will be the pre-Christmas show. Anyone want to say happy holidays? Anyone, anyone want to say happy, happy Kwanzaa? Happy everyone. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Right. Merry Christmas, yo. Happy holiday. And enjoy your holidays. And we will be back next week with part two. So until then, this is Garnin saying until next week, we are ghost. Of Christmas past. Of Christmas past. <laughs> This One Up podcast is brought to you by Rolando, the eagerly anticipated platform adventure created exclusively for the iPhone and iPod Touch. Use innovative tilt, swipe, and multi-touch controls to guide the Rolandos through four unique worlds and dozens of vibrant levels. Manipulate the environment by using a variety of interactive gizmos, including catapults, bomb dispensers, and drawbridges as you lead the Rolandos to victory. Play the game everyone's talking about. Rolando is available now on the iTunes App Store.